Jason Michaels, one of the many ministers at CAG Ministries. I would like to thank you on behalf of the ministry team and the congregation of Christian Assembly of God for taking time to allow us to minister to you today. Before we go any further, let's go live into the sanctuary of Christian Assembly of God for a short preview of today's message. Thanks again. Verse 7, He lifted up Himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him cast a stone at her. Jesus turned the situation around on the accusers. Can, can I give you the Jason translation of this scripture today? And this is the title of the sermon. Jesus was simply saying to all the accusers, drop the rocks. Amen. Amen. Drop the rocks. Jesus was saying, if there's anybody here perfect, yes. if there's anybody that has no sin in their life, no issues, no hidden parts, no secrets, go ahead and take aim and fire. That's it. Take aim and fire. But they drop the rocks. If someone in their life is wrong, we still have no excuse to take aim and fire. You may have your stones ready, but Jesus was saying to these men, if you have no faults in your life, no sin in your heart, go ahead. Jesus is giving us the perfect example of forgiveness today. Yeah. Somebody yeah. may have hurt you today, but drop your rocks. There's a greater cause, hallelujah. Yeah. Drop your rocks on the hurt and the pain. Drop your rocks on, on who has said this and who has dropped. There's something to do for Jesus today. Yeah. Drop your rocks. Somebody in your family may have hurt you. Somebody may have said something. Somebody may have come against your ministry. Somebody may have done something and they've done you wrong. But drop your rocks. You can't hold on to it. It's like a cancer. It'll eat the inside of you. Drop your rocks. Jesus is saying, drop your rocks. This is Pastor Jason again. We hope you enjoyed that short preview of today's message. Before we go any further, we'd like to give you a small glimpse of our worship service. Now, let's go back into the sanctuary as our worship team lifts up the name of Jesus, the name above all names, the name by which we are saved. Sanctuary for today's message. 
Open up your heart and mind and allow the love of God to speak into your life today. We pray you enjoy this message. Hope to see you again soon. John chapter 8 and verse 1. Are you there? Amen. Jesus went into the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master woman, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Verse 5. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? Verse 6. This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down with his finger and wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, in verse 7, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He who is, this, he who is without sin, let me say that again, He who is without sin among you, let him cast a stone. At her. Let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this day, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy and grace and kindness, God. Where would we be without you, yes. Jesus? Where could we go? Where else could right. we go but to the Lord? Hallelujah. Lord, we open up our hearts and minds and our thank spirits you, today, Lord, that we will receive something from you. Precious Lord, you. touch me today, Lord, that we could minister something Precious that will touch the hearts and the lives of people, that we would turn our hearts and minds yes. towards you and the cross, and we'll never fail to praise you and glorify you and this whole church in corporate, we say, amen. amen. Hallelujah. This is my interpretation of this story today. Jesus was teaching and ministering. In the middle of this teaching, these guys bring this broke, humiliated woman and puts her right in front of the face of my Savior. Yes, yes. Here she is, Son of God. Teach us something about this. Right. Tell us about this. Can you fix this, Jesus? What do you have to say about this sinful, unholy woman? We caught her in the middle of the act. Here she is. Our stones are ready to aim and fire. But can I declare today, drop the rocks. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Drop yeah. the rocks. Yeah. If you research a little deeper into this passage, you understand that this woman was dragged to Jesus by brutal force. Yeah. She was taken against her own will and placed in direct contact with my Savior. But it doesn't matter how broken you are when you're in the midst of my Savior. Hallelujah. He can turn the situation around. Drop the rocks today. Hallelujah. Taken against her own will. Can you imagine the self-righteousness self of these men as they humiliated this woman and brought her great humiliation and shame? They had no concern for her feelings. There was no discussion concerning restoration. They treated her as if her life could never turn around. As if uh, they were no concern if she could have a new beginning. This wasn't even a thought. Forgiveness never entered their mind. You have to understand today that no matter what anyone says about you, God still has a plan for you. Hallelujah. Because it doesn't matter where you are today. It matters where you are going. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter if you're in the valley today, the mountain, the hilltop is just in the distance. Hallelujah. And the same God that's with you in the valley is the same God that will be with you on the mountaintop. His word declares, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I go all the way with you, even to the Oh, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. You serve a mighty, loving, ever-caring God that hung the world on nothing. That stuck from the stars into space. It doesn't matter what anybody says about me. It matters what God thinks about you. Hallelujah. Here she was. They had no concern for her mental state. No concern, no love, no compassion. 
They lacked one of the greatest commandments that God said in His Word in 1 Corinthians 13 and 13. And now these three remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. You see, as we continue to read this passage in John, we are going to find out that this woman was shown the love of Christ. Somebody today may say, I want to be more like Jesus. Can I talk to the Christian today? You may say today, how can I be more like Jesus? Be more like the Savior. Uh, uh, love those that seem to be unlovable. Uh, have a kind word to say to someone that's having a rough day. Hallelujah. It's showing the love of God. Pick someone up when the hardships of life are weighing them down. For it was Jesus that, that saw his friend Peter sinking in the middle of the water. And Matthew 14 and 31 says, And my Bible declares immediately. Hallelujah. Immediately. Look at that word. Immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. It was something that took a great deal of time. This was quick. Jesus answers your prayers quick. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's the God on time. No matter where you've been, no matter where you're going, my Bible declares that immediately Jesus stretched forth His hand. You can't get too far from my Savior. We can make mistakes. We can drift away from God. We can run from God, but we can't hide. For my Bible declares in the book of Romans, nor height nor depth, nor any other creature shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This scripture declares that no matter where you go, where you've been, no matter where you're going, you cannot separate yourself from the love of Christ. You can try to separate yourself, but it's some part impossible. It can simply not happen. Today I must declare that even if you're running, even if you're hiding, even if you've lost all hope, even if you're depressed and broken hearted, are you tired and worn out today? Matthew 11 and 28 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. You're never alone because the love of God is always with you. Hallelujah. You give the Lord a great big hand. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll go all the way. This scripture declares that no matter where you go, you can escape the love of God. This is Jesus that I owe my life to. He left the splendor of heaven. With walls of jasper and gates of pearl and streets of gold and angels singing holy, holy, holy. Jesus left all of that to be your redeemer. Yeah. To be your savior. To be your everything as Miranda sung about. That's what he is. He's all you need. To be your healer and deliver a friend that sticks closer than a brother. One of my favorite scriptures in John 15 and 13 says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. That's what your Jesus did. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what your Jesus. Love is displayed in the garden as Jesus is praying. He's under more mental anguish than anyone can ever imagine. As his sweat became great drops of blood, disappointed with the disciples, all I ask you to do, disciples, is just watch. Just watch, guys. That's all I need you to do. That's my only requirement for you today. But you must understand that in the middle of the mental torture, all the powers of hell screaming my Savior's name, uh, you can't, Jesus. They're not worth the suffering. They're not worth the pain. They're not worth the anguish. The cat of nine tails and the whipping post. You know that space in you, Jesus. They're not worth it. The crown of thorns. Uh, uh, they're not wor worth it. The nails in your hands and feet. The mockery, the shame, the humiliation. They're not worth it. But Jesus, knowing the cross that was set before him in Luke 22 and 42, he said, Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Hallelujah. What a statement. What a redeeming statement that Jesus made. I'm so glad he said yes to the most important event that has ever taken place on this planet. I'm so glad that Jesus said yes to the cross. I'm so glad that he said yes to being a my redeemer. I'm so glad he said I'll go. Hallelujah. I'm so glad he said yes 
to being my Savior and my healer. He said yes to being your deliverer, your peace and joy, your high priest, your chief mediator. He said yes. I'll be your bread of life. I'll be your living water. I'll be the true vine. I'll be the lion of the tribe of Judah. For the Bible declares in Revelation 5 and 5. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. Hallelujah. He hath prevailed to open the book. He was saying, I know someone who is worthy, and his name is Jesus. Because it was a cross 2,000 years ago where he bled and died. But not only did he die, for it was on that glorious resurrection morning when the stone was rolled away that my Jesus busted out of a borrowed tomb. I know I've said this before, but it was a borrowed tomb. Why? Because Jesus didn't need a permanent place for his body to lay. Hallelujah. He said, where I am there, you may be also. He's not here. He's risen. Borrowed yeah. tomb. He didn't need a long three days. That's all he needed it for. He defeated death, hell, and the grave. Ephesians 4 and 8 said, When he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. This is my hope. This is my peace. No longer was mankind captive to the paradise section. Now Jesus has set us free. We are his because of the wonderful cross. And I'll let Pastor preach about the paradise section. But I want you to know that this elder looked at him and said, Stop your crying. Don't you shed one tear today. Uh, wipe your eyes, boy. Jesus, the Son of the living God, the Lamb that was slain from the foundation of the earth. Hallelujah. He's the one that you're going to sing that new song about. Hallelujah. And I want to emphasize, He alone can open the book. Not my wealth, not my riches, not my good deeds, not anything that I've done, my bank account or church attendance, not my tithes or offering or my daily devotion, not my Christian Facebook status that I post, hallelujah, not my praise, not my worship, not my shouting, not anything that I have done. Jesus, the Lamb of God, He prevailed and He is the only one that can open that book. Hallelujah. Let's go on down to verse 4 in John 8. They say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Look at this word they used to address Jesus. They said the word Master, which means teacher. They didn't use the word Lord, the same word that was used by the man on the right side of Jesus as he was dying for their sins. Why didn't they use Lord? Hallelujah. They didn't recognize him as being the Savior. They used the word master in a taunting way, meaning if you are the teacher, if you are the master, then teach us something about this. Look at this woman. Look at her sin. Look at her. Teach us now. Give us an answer to her sin. She's an outcast. She's a disappointment. Take a good look at this, Jesus, and give your opinion on this unholy, sinful woman. Verse 5, Now Moses and the law commanded that such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? They were saying, respond, Jesus. Say something. Respond to her sin, Jesus. She's been caught. She's guilty. We saw it with our own eyes. We brought her to you. Look at her. Give us an answer because we have our stones ready. Just give us the go ahead. We're ready to aim and fire but can I say today, drop the rocks. Drop the rocks. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what sin has attached itself to your life. Drop the rocks today. Hallelujah. He's the Savior of the world. Hallelujah. He didn't come to this world to condemn the world, but through Him that we might be saved. Drop the rocks today. Verse 6, this they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. You see, Jesus' response to sin 
was a cross. You see, Jesus' response to sin was nail start hands. You see, Jesus' response to sin, some may not understand. You may not be able to wrap your mind around this forgiveness, but I must tell you today, He's a forgiver. You may not understand redemption, but He's a still a redeemer. This is Jesus' response to sin explained clearly in John 3 and 17, and I already quoted it. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Hallelujah. He's not throwing no rocks today. Drop yours. Drop yours on yourself today. Hallelujah. Serve Him with all you have. You've been glorious redeemed. That's why I praise Him and serve Him. That's why I call Him Savior. That's why I call Him King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Alpha Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and last, and my soon coming. That's why I praise Him in the middle of the storm because He's the sea walker. You may say today, Jason, you don't know what I've done. You don't know where I've been. You don't know how far I've drifted away. You don't know how far I've gone. You don't know who I really am on the inside. I do agree. I don't know everything about you, but he does. Woo! I do agree. I don't know you, but he knows your name. Every step you take, every move you make, hallelujah, he even knows the hairs on your head. He knows the secret things that you've hidden from everyone around you. And despite knowing everything about you, he still invites you to come and take of the waters of life freely. I'm not just talking to the sinner today. I'm talking to the saint that's holding on to things. Drop your rocks today. You see, we're all once sinners. This is what happens to our sins in Micah. 7 and 19, he will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities, and that will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. You must understand that we serve a God that forgets the past. Amen. We serve a God that loves us as far as the east is to the west. Yeah. We serve a God that takes our sins and casts them into the depths of the sea to be remembered no more. I'm redeemed. Old things are passed away, yeah. and all things become new. Can I speak to the unsaved listening today? You can't get too far from grace. You can't get too far from mercy. Hallelujah. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Are you weak? Are you tired? Are you heavy laden? Are you worn out today? Lay your burdens at the feet of Jesus today. His grace is all you'll ever need. You can't earn it. You can't fix it. Your life, you can't obtain it on your own. You have no control over it. God accepts you just the way you are. For that children's song says, He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. I heard somebody the other day, if he made the world and, and everything in it, and, and the fishes and the animals, and he made man and woman, if he did all of this in six days, what can he do with my life? <laughs> what can he do with your life if you turn it over today? You don't need to shine and polish your life up before you serve him. Look at Peter, probably the most unpolished disciple of them all. He was the guy that sunk in the middle of the raging storm. He was the guy that cussed him to die. He never knew Jesus. He cut the soldier's ear off. Uh, he's a, the, but he is the same disciple that the angel mentioned on that glorious resurrection morning when those ladies came to the empty tomb and he said, go tell my disciples. And he said two words. That angel said, and Peter. He doesn't forget you. I'm singling you out, Peter. I know you're rough around the edges. That may be you today. I, I, I know your past, but I also know your future. I know the plans I have for you. Peter had a temper. Peter had a dirty mouth. 
He was a liar, and he needed that, and, and but he needed the hand of Jesus, or he would drown. But Jesus saw something on the inside yeah. of Peter. Hallelujah! God knows what's on the inside of you. God doesn't need you to fix yourself. That's His job. Amen. That's His specialty. Yeah. You come and you take of the waters of life freely. Hallelujah! Yeah. You come, and He takes care of the rest. Hallelujah! So when they continue. Asking him in verse 7. They continued asking Jesus. They were demanding a response from my Lord. They were demanding some sort of reaction from Jesus. Whom they called Master. But they would not call him Lord. Verse 7. He lifted up himself and said unto them. He that is without sin among you. Let him cast a stone at her. Jesus turned the situation around on the accusers. Can, can I give you the Jason translation of this scripture today? And this is the title of the sermon. Jesus was simply saying to all the accusers, drop the rocks. Amen. Amen. Drop the rocks. Amen. Jesus was saying, if there's anybody here perfect, yes. if there's anybody that has no sin in their life, no issues, no hidden parts, no secrets, go ahead and take aim and fire. That's it. Take aim and fire. But they drop the rocks. If someone in their life is wrong, we still have no excuse to take aim and fire. You may have your stones ready, but Jesus was saying to these men, if you have no faults in your life, no sin in your heart, go ahead. Jesus is giving us the perfect example of forgiveness today. Somebody may have hurt you today, but drop your rocks. There's a greater cause, hallelujah. Yeah. Drop your rocks on the hurt and the pain. Drop your rocks on, on who has said this and who has dropped. There's something to do for Jesus today. Yeah. Drop your rocks. Somebody in your family may have hurt you. Somebody may have said something. Somebody may have come against your ministry. Somebody may have done something and they've done you wrong. But drop your rocks. You can't hold on to it. It's like a cancer. It'll eat the inside of you. Drop your rocks. Jesus is saying, drop your rocks. The perfect example of forgiveness in verse 8. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. What he wrote was insignificant to the understanding of this passage. If it was relevant, then we would know. But what we do know is that he continued to write, ignoring the accusers. You see, God doesn't see you the same way everybody else sees you. God sees what's on the inside. God sees your purpose. God sees why you were placed on this planet. And I'm so glad that God can see who I can really be. Yes, he knows what I am. Yes, he knows my faults and failures. Yes, he knows my shortcomings. But he also knows the potential of who I can be with his guidance. It's not you on the inside. It's not anything that you can do. It's Christ that's living on the inside of you. It's the cross, hallelujah. Verse 9, and they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, being at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. You see, they drop the rocks. Amen. You see, the stones in this passage are symbolic of bringing increased pain and suffering. These stones were symbolic of added humiliation and added hurt on a situation that had already went too far. Yes. This is not the character of God because the character of God is to wrap his arms around the sinner. Yes. The character of God is to wrap his arms around the the broken. The character of God is to wrap his arms around the diseased and oppressed. The character of God is to wrap his arms around the bruised and the hurt and the beaten. The character of God is to wrap his arms around the down and out, for he is the lifter of mine head. The character of God is to wrap his arms around the woman, boy or girl, 
lost without hope. This is the true character of your mighty God. Yes. Verse 10, and when Jesus had lifted up himself, he saw none but the woman. He said unto her, Woman, where are those nine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? Those of you in the sanctuary today listening to this recording on CD, DVD, no matter how you got this, no matter if you're sitting here today, I challenge you today to look deep into the words when it declares, where are thine accusers? There is nobody here to accuse you today. There is nobody here to hurt you today. You have entered into a very safe place. I challenge you today to accept this love. And not only accept this love, accept this Savior. Amen. Amen. We are talking to the saint. We've already accepted him. No, really, really accept who he can really be in your life. Those of you that are saved, be encouraged today. Because you're serving a God that didn't remember your past. He prepares you for a great future. Verse 11, she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, I love these three words, neither do I. Neither do I. It doesn't matter what you've done, where you've been, where you're going. Jesus looked at this woman and she said, Neither do I. You see, Jesus will go great lengths to find you. Ask that woman at the well. She said, he said, I must needs go to Samaria. That wasn't even the route that he should have taken. He made a special trip to change this woman's life. God will make a special trip for you to change your life. Hallelujah. Now look at this word that this woman used to address Jesus. She used the word Lord. For those, those men, all they could say was Master. But this woman, she called him Lord. She, she called him Lord. When she called him Lord, she was immediately surrendered her life over to the king. For she was recognizing who he could really be in her life. Who can Jesus be in your life today? He can be more than you ever longed for. She used the word Lord, which means she accepted him as Savior. Just like the man on the right side of Jesus that was 15 feet away from the Savior uh, of the whole world. And he addressed Jesus when he said those three most beautiful words. And I ministered on it so many times. But it's so deep into my soul when he said, Lord, remember me. I don't know where you're at in your life today. But I know, do know that you have the same access to this Lord. Amen. You may have had shortcomings in your life. You may have failed your friends and family. You may be disappointed with your own life. And you may have picked up your own rocks and have said, I can never really serve this Jesus. Drop the rocks. I want to tell you today, just drop them. I can never really do this Christian thing. Drop the rocks. I can never be one of those church-going, uh, uh, Bible-talking People drop the rocks. I can't raise my hand and surrender to this Jesus. Drop the rocks. I can't forgive myself. Drop the rocks. I went too far. Drop the rocks. I ran too long. Drop the rocks. I've tried Jesus before and I failed. Drop the rocks. I can't do it on my own. Well, that's the point. Hallelujah. First Peter 5 and 7 says, Casting all your cares upon Him, for He careth for you. Drop the rocks today. You can serve Him. You can do it. Drop the, I'm not able, but He is. Hallelujah. Drop the rocks. Hebrews 12 and 1. Let me read you, leave you with this one scripture. Wherefore, seeing we are also are compassed about with a great cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race.
grace that is set before us. Verse 2, so revealing. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross. I said endured the cross. For who? You and I. Despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let me declare today. Drop the rocks and run the race. For there is something to do for the king today. If you love him, give him a great big hand today. Drop the rocks. Amen.